Hey, Dan and Brad, what's up? Hey, Scott. Hey. Thank you for the intro. You saw my uh, juggling act right before we started the webinar. Brad, just for your entertainment, uh, go to webinar decided to have me relog in again. After Don't you day. love the way that is? It is so fantastic. Okay, everybody, uh, thank you so, so much for coming to our webinar and participating with us. Brad, who has no idea what's about to happen, Brad, you're going to be blown away. Yeah, I'm always blown away, but you know what's great about the, the Wednesday webinar is it does really cater to both the subscribers of Trade Ideas, people that know about the tech, and, and people that don't. So, good well, opportunity. I've got to tell you something. Tell you something. Today's session is going to resonate big time because we're going to answer a question that I think is on everybody's mind, but we're going to talk about it first in a way that really brings it all home for people. Obviously, before we start, let's go to the lawyer section. Um, you're going to be listening to professional drivers on a closed... Oh, wait, sorry. Wrong legal disclaimer. Brad, I hate that one. You know, every time you see a car on TV, somewhere it's written where you can't read it that... It's a professional driver on a closed course. I mean, have we lost our minds? Okay, on that note, Trade Ideas is a publisher. We are not a registered investment advisor. We have to tell you that everything that you're going to hear is for educational and informational purposes only. Nothing that you are going to be seeing here is a recommendation to buy or sell any kind of securities. And should you need one, you ought to consult a registered investment advisor. Okay, moving right along. Well done. Brad, today we're going to tell about the true story about how Dan Merkin and his friends changed active investing. For a long time in the webinars and from various times that I visited the Barry's chat room, we've been talking about how would a scientist approach investing. And we are not talking about a scientist who works at Goldman Sachs in their HFT department because I'm going to blow you guys away right now. HFT trading, the algos that you are all complaining about, it's a ghost. It's a myth. It doesn't exist the way you think it does. Okay? Those things are simply information arbitrage. What they're trying to do is they're trying to clean up latency issues. If there is some you know, ineffective something in the quote system where a price of a stock where you can buy it this second is a little bit higher, like a fraction of a fraction of a cent. And you can sell it instantly and make that fraction and fraction of a cent. They go out there, and that's what HFT trading is really all about. Now, how they set that up can look confusing to people, but that's really the truth. One of the things and why this is called the true story about Dan and his buddies, Brad, and some of the other people here is that there's a fantastic thing we learned from what we call our $50 million education. You know, Brad, we're kind of transparent. And a lot of times people maybe think that there isn't any real people behind trade ideas, but there's kind of a really interesting story. And we really suggest for everybody to go into our website and read the kind of the background of trade ideas, what happened. Oh, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna introduce a new book. I was getting ready. Buddy, I am. <laughs> I am because we're gonna dive into the thick of things. Don't worry about this. You know the intro here. I'm just trying to set this up so people know where we're coming from. Yeah. Brad and I were in a Sand Hill Road Uber of the of, of the 1999-2000 era where they thought we were gonna be billion billion dollar companies. All of this before 9/11 and the dot-com bubble, and we were set to give the active trader technology to the hedge funds because the thought was hedge funds have so much more capital. Imagine if they just start turning it over a little bit more, you know. And Brad and I were tasked with that task because we were young and smart and so handsome, and we went at it. And the thing that happened when we went at it is Brad and I kind of found something really interesting that surprised us. So the more we went and talked to the hedge funds, the, and the more the hedge funds saw what we were trying to get them to do, they were like, you guys crazy? That shit's risky, buying something off of some chart or something. They had no earthly desire to take risks off of you know, information that 
could not be proven. In other words, I think, if it, I, I think one of the best lines was the fact that I don't even want to mention the name of the firm we were at, but we, we were showing them. The letter A. <laughs> What's that? Is that the one that starts with the letter A? It is, yeah. Okay, go ahead. And these guys, they, they were, the, the technology was just so amazing, uh, but it was too amazing. It showed real-time P&L, and uh, I think it scared them to actually see how far down they were at any given time. Yeah, they were like, guys, guys, turn that shit off. You're giving me a heart attack. I mean, this is what... We did learn a lot, though, right? We, we definitely learned a lot. A $6 billion hedge fund said this, okay? And by the way, we go to large wealth management uh, offices here, their strategy is value investing. Like that's a strategy. You know, that's like air breathing or bed sleeping. All things that, by the way, I believe I enjoy quite a bit. So this brings us to the story about Breaking Vegas. Okay, so if any of you have seen this movie, it's about how the MIT card counting team decided to break Vegas. And if you look at the game of 21 and if you analyze the big numbers, like take all the possibilities of all the hands and count them all up, there's a slight advantage that you can have over blackjack if you know how to count your cards. Okay, So the way to not count cards, let's go here, is something that the industry of fintech and the brokerage world has been pushing on the individual investor for 20 years because, well, they're in line with the casinos. <laughs> they are the casinos. They don't want you guys to count cards, you know, because that gives you power. Now, it's not illegal in the stock market, but they certainly have no interest in you succeeding at it. What they want you to do is they want you to open up your beautiful account, put your $50,000 in there and give it to them to manage. And they will then do everything in their power to not lose their ass, but not really care if they win. They're just trying to match the S&P. Hey, if the wind's blowing in our back, we're moving that way. If it's blowing in our face, hey, everybody's losing. And this has been thrown down the throat of the individual investor, I mean, goodness, since the 80s, really, the memes have been repeated, 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 but every time the individual investor gets a hold of just a nugget of an advantage, it's either pulled away from you or just some luck happens where it's a challenging environment and the whole thing goes away. And now the embarrassment of robo-investing, where they're basically assembly lining. Now, I don't even advise you, just give us your money and we'll literally throw poop at the window uh, of the index. So the bottom line is the reason we're doing something different is you can't get wealthy that way. If you're an average, you're average. Okay. So we're going to show you how we're going to break Wall Street. So why are you, again, listening to myself, this handsome fellow that's going to tell you a great story as well? We, I, myself, as one of the fortunate people who have been very good at it, and I'm kind of like these guys. We're the MIT card counting team. I'm the handsome one that talks people into the casino. The card counter you've never seen on a webinar because he's sitting so deep in our server room. I mean, Brad, we, we don't let him out, do we? We don't. We don't. I was just noticing what happens to newspaper after 25 years. Or 20 I know, years. buddy. We're old. This is when I was a handsome 26-year-old. That's right, Ulrich. Um. So we are the MIT card counting team of today with software, okay? And as a result of what we're doing, this is what's happening to our business. Again, this is what Scott had talked about. We're the fastest growing fintech, and you're in the right place because I'm about to blow your mind, okay? So in order to blow your mind, I'm going to get rid of this presentation because this is where the juice comes in, Brad. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about what is it that makes us so freaking good. What? Why do we have an advantage? Okay. So. The screen's we, not sharing very well right now, though. But at least for me, it's flickering a bit. Is it still? How about anybody else? Let's uh, let's get a little feedback. How are you guys seeing the screen? Yikes! Hold on a second. Um, hey, Brad. Maybe can you show your uh, Holly channel? Because it. Seems like that'll be fine, or did something just happen? Okay, something just happened. Brad, are you doing it? Yeah, I just took my screen here. Okay. I can freestyle, guys. Don't worry. 
Brad's voting it up. Thank you. Brad, please do me a favor. Extend it out so that all the positions are visible. And once again, make sure right now we're seeing Brad's screen. Is it flickering? Because it's not for me. It looks beautiful. Okay, fantastic. Moving right along. So what does it mean to card count in Vegas? Hey, I'll tell you what it means. It means that our AI is generating the type of signals that if you're watching them and following the risk criteria, in other words, getting out of them when you need to get out of them, but getting back in when you cross the risk on threshold, you will reap the benefit of a systematic uh, approach to capturing winning trades. And let's look at what we're talking about here. Thank you, Brad. Um, XENE was popped in at uh, 10.43. There was a very quick profit save in the risk off methodology, but as soon as it crossed risk on, and it was already, I believe, probably risk on or very close by that point. Um, the thing that we tell everybody who uses our software is that is where you get back in so as to be able to reap the benefit of the risk on number. And these are the kind of percentages that our software is trying to find. I'm not saying by any means that today, by the way, was easy because the last couple of days, the market's volatility has been kind of challenging. But what I am saying, and this is the critical part, okay, is that what are you focusing on? So many people just focus on quote unquote stuff. You hear stuff on Twitter, you see stuff on some vendor, you see stuff at a, on a social network, or you don't even, or maybe you're in uh, somewhere else. Maybe you're in our trading room, maybe you're in another trading room. But we would, we have said with Barry and we, with everybody else that over the long term, over the laws of large numbers, something you will see is going to happen, which is our software will beat you all the time because we are using large server algorithmic machine learning artificial intelligence to find where the best odds are just like the MIT card counting team. Now Brad, I'm about to give you a cloud link since you are um, the driver. Bring it on. And I'm going to talk to you through one second. Here. here, Brad. So one of the things that Brad's doing, and um, I did give it to you right now, didn't I? Yeah, you sure did. Okay. So Brad will be showing you on his screen that I just shared with him a strategy. Brad's going to open it up and he's going to bring it to your attention. Brad, what does this strategy say? Holly has fund entry signal staging two-day hold. Fantastic. I can read um, by the way, uh, there's a, it's a possibility, Brad, that you might have to speak on it in a second if an intruder attacks me in my office, if you know okay. what I mean. But uh, don't worry about that. Guys, this is why we love these webinars. It's completely uh, freestyle. But here's where we we're about to blow you away. So, Brad, backtest the strategy as per the backtest that you see. I mean, because all of that's already... So let me um, let me just kind of do a, a quick high level here for for people that may not be aware of the Odds Maker, which is our event-based backtesting tool inside of of Trade Ideas. It can be used on any of the alert windows. So the alert window has that A in the upper left-hand corner. So let's go ahead. We'll hit the right-click menu, and I'm going to backtest the strategy, and let's see what Dan has set up here. Doesn't look like we're going to be trading the first five minutes of the market. We're on the West Coast. We start at 6.30. So we're going to start looking at opportunities at 6.35, and we're going to end looking at opportunities at 11 o'clock. So that's our window of opportunity to initiate a position. And then we're going to go ahead and hold that position at the market open tomorrow plus two days. So we're going to hold this for several days. So, Brad, let me, let me talk about this and why this is happening because this is part of, like, blow your mind kind of stuff. So there's actually a reason why this is called, what the, what the hell is the name of the strategy? <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, Holly Hedge Fund Entry Signal. Okay. So we have two big hedge funds that are really interested in this technology, and we are working on uh, – basically creating a hedge fund as Holly. So the reason I said hedge fund is, Brad, if you could, um, what you call it, um, 
you could show the configuration screen real quick so the people can see what kind of stocks that they're going to be watching because this is kind of important because hedge funds cannot trade stocks that are like just only trade 100,000 shares, it's not in their bylaws, et cetera, et cetera. So for this specific thing, we, the card counting team at MIT, we're doing something different. Brad, show the window specific filters. So the, the price is at least $15. Well, you, I guess you were on the summary, which is absolutely fine. Just saying, so, part and parcel, right? Right. So what's happening here is this is a has to be a stock. It's not an ETF. The way that's filtered is through the earnings per share. So it's either making money or losing money, but at least it's a company that is um, a company versus an ETF. It has a market cap, I believe it's 10 billion, if I squint really squinty. Yeah, don't make me do it. I'm going to trust you. 10 billion. 10 billion. And then we're looking for a few characteristics of what a move might be. Uh, it's 1 billion. Okay. Market cap, 1 billion. Yeah, yeah, 1 billion. So 1 billion market cap. And then we're looking for a characteristic, okay, which is that has some volume over the five-minute uh, time frame, and it's gone up at least a tenth of a percent over the last five minutes. So there's something kind of drifting upwards. And because this stock is uh, has some of these fundamentals, like it, it trades at least a million shares a day, I believe, right? Yeah. And it's got this volume and it's got this market. Let, let's real quick, just so people know, this is really one of the, the sweet spots of trade ideas. We have all the normal um, price movements, volume movements, and all the different time frames. So we we know it's normal on a five minute time frame. So this is telling us we want it to be fifty percent more than normal on that five minutes. And we do it in all the different time frames. Right. So it's a minimum of hundred and fifty percent. None of these guys you have to do, by the way. We're just kind of showing you what's the inside of the MIT lab. So Brad, hit OK, and then let's do the back test and watch what happens when Brad does this back test. I'm just going to use the default, so I'm going to simulate right. my. Yep. So we're going to our server, looking at all the different possibilities. Every single sing signal that came through that window, we're going to hypothesize that we buy it and we hold it for that three days. And we can go back uh, three months, so it's 60 trading days, to look at this tip data. Oh, Brad, I got something else for you. <laughs> what do you have? Let's see here. That's a good-looking strategy. It's got a nice-looking equity curve here. That's a lot right. of trades. It would be lots really tough to implement. Lots of, that trade. nice. lots of trades, but here's the thing. Here's what people need to understand. Nobody is trading this strategy. Again, this is not HFT. This isn't this crazy bullshit that everyone tells you guys. Notice this, the name, Brad. It's called Holly Hedge Fund Entry Signal Staging. Yeah. So before we start, so before we start, we throw out a hypothesis. So Brad, what's the actual entry signal event that this uh, window is looking for? Looks like it's a 25% pullback from the open. Well, can we show them what that looks like, number one, in an alert window and sort of like maybe on a chart so people can okay. kind of see what happened? If you so go we'll back to your a little history for today. By so doing that, you can see all the signals that occurred today had I been watching this here in real time. Yeah, so pick on, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, just pick on one of them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so here's an example where. Uh, the stock yeah, a little later into the day. Let's go, you know, half hour into the day here. Oh that yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here's the one that didn't work. Perfect, because again, we're we're trying to make a very important point. So notice how a stock like pulled back and then it somewhere in that candle started to go back up. See that green candle? So it kind of hit a low, then turned around, and our software's like, well, hey, that's a uh, um, 25% pullback from the open lows where, where it's been, and it meets all the criteria that we had said before. It's got that 15-minute volume. In other words, it looks like momentum. And by the way, Brad, maybe if we can zoom in on that sucker a little more on that camera, just zoom yeah. in on it. So, I mean, that's exactly what that looks like. I mean, at that moment, before we saw the future, 
it was a beautiful looking entry if this thing was going to potentially die. Software saw that, alerted you to it, whatever. But Brad and I, in order to give the hedge funds a good product, we say, okay, right click, back test, and we ask the simple question to our software, to our AI. We say, Holly, what happens when these occurs, uh, occurrences take place and what happens two days later? So Brad, just click on the daily tab there by the equity curve. Yeah. So this kind of gives you a visual per day so you can see it doesn't win every day, doesn't even trade every day. But when these things get set up, you know, more than not, you're going to be doing well. But by the way, Brad, as you know, I mean, no one's going to be pounding away at this like this. So I sent you another link. You mean from a perspective of almost 2,000 trades? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So again, we started with a good concept, but now we asked our artificial intelligence. So this is, so what does this look like? Brad, if we were back at our card counting table, imagine you were sitting at a blackjack table, and as everything's going by, not only is it telling you the proper strategy, like when to, you know, uh, hold or when to hit, but it's also keeping account of the face cards and the non-face cards. So as soon as the count is appropriate to your best odds, it says, hey, here's something you should be involved in. This is the same thing. When we go to the AI, we say, AI, show me everything where these situations took place, but the setup was better. In other words, get rid of this, the noise and show me more and more of the probabilistic windows. So now, Brad, let's rerun it. So I love this. Yeah. Okay. So I did. Um, this is this is actually I just ran a history for today. So before I even ran the odds maker, I can see that it's put in some filters here in this strategy. I don't know what they are yet. That doesn't really matter. But it's put in some filters that have limited the results. So remember, this was the strategy that we had run previously. This was the new one. Really, the same base strategy with some additional filters in it. AI augmented. In other words, the software went through all these 1,900 and whatever trades, learned how it would do it better. Not curve fitted, but learned which, where were the pockets of probabilities? Like, what ingredients am I to be looking for that I didn't know before? And then, drop it off. I'm imagining these are all the same parameters. Absolutely. And let's just say. Well, I certainly, I mean, it certainly looks better for one. That it's much more manageable here uh, from a number of trades. I really like the uh, average winner to loser ratio. That's certainly well, that's tons of improvement. You know. Yeah. And and here's the. And, and this is what card counting in Vegas is like. And by the way, here's the super duper schlooper part of this whole thing. Brad, today, for those of you who are premium subscribers, we're going to collaborate this strategy to you. We're not going to keep updating it for you because, again, that's the part that hedge funds pay for. But we're going to give you this version, the one that Brad's got right now. And we have no idea how long it could run. Right, Brad? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, that's the, you know that's the beauty of what the AI does, right? It, it doesn't ever. It, it looks at this data every day, and it continues to do this optimization that's been done here. And um, but this was nice. This is a great little strategy. And this is what I want you guys to see. This is why I'm saying we've changed the freaking game. You know, this is not what TradeStation is about. This is not what VectorVest is about. They're not about card counting. They're not about applying gigantic numbers of mathematics. So every so Brad, if you could scooch that over and hand it either to Scott or to you know the cloud link so that everybody has it. So we can yeah. even, even give it them the um, the. Uh, I'll do both. I'll do both. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but this is why this webinar is so exciting. I mean, sometimes we just completely lose it and give you guys the honey. So hold on though. So when you save stuff to the cloud or when you load stuff, it can be a single window, it can be a couple windows, it can be a whole layout here. So I'm going to go ahead and Holly Hedge Fund Machine Learn. So these two, these two windows, these two alert windows are going to be included 
uh, in this cloud link right here. So what we'll do, um, I'll put it here in the chat, but we'll also send it out with the video replay. Yeah. So that's what it's like. The reason I wanted to show this, Brad, is I wanted people to kind of feel, what is it, why do you see a Holly signal, right? Well, it starts off like our team of algorithms, and there's what you see here on Brad's screen where you see Holly hedge fund entry signal staging. We have 50 staging ways that we break up the market. We're looking for continuation plays. We're looking for bottom picking plays. We're looking for middle of the day, you know, turnarounds. Kind of like generic things that you would want to be looking at. We never, ever, Brad, you know I'm going to get mad. We never, ever look for RSI above 80 or MACD crossing the signal line because, my God, that's the wool over your, uh, what, what's, well, how does that saying go? Over your eyes? Something like that, but, 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 but to be fair, to be fair, we don't care about it, right? But it's certainly something, it's a metric that's in trade ideas, and Holly, the AI, could certainly care about it if it finds some type of, you know, our value there. Right, but I'm saying people spend their hard-earned money on some of this stuff thinking that it alone works. Yeah, and that, alone is just the tough part, right? Well, well, right, and that's why I get passionate and upset because, you know, to change the game, to change the game, I have to create something that that, that, that does something different. That gives. <laughs> so, I have I had a friend come in. Um, my daughter just uh, came into the webinar. So this is like that. Remember where they just showed that British guy? No. Oh, okay. So let me finish. The point being here is that to see what it's like to actually go through the process, notice, Brad, rerun the uh, Holly Hedgefarm staging, please. This guy right here? Well, I have it the right staging. here. If you already have it, then just bring oh, the it staging. in. I have the staging, too. Yeah, so the staging one, look, it has 1,969 events that we looked at. How many times, be honest with yourself, have you ever looked at 1,969 charts in a year, in two years. Well, you can't do it, right? You can't do it in a timely way. But let me show you something. And this is really, well, this is why we developed Holly in the first place. It was, we still give you the ability to peek at this data, to manipulate the data, to see really where, I don't know, the price variance lie. Like, for instance, this right here, this is a, a view at the price levels on this particular window. It looks like we're looking at stocks anywhere from zero to $1,000 or $900. I could break that up into any interval I want here and really take a, a look at that data. How successful am I on stocks between $10 and $20, 20 and 30 time of day? How successful am I trading certain times of day? How successful are certain filters? Like here's that one minute RSI Dan's talking about. Well, I mean, this is looking at, this is breaking it down into all these different, you know, value points, RSI between 10 and 20, 20 and 30, 30 and 40. And how do they do? with respect to all of these trades. So we give you the ability to really peer into the data, all the special filters that Trade Ideas has. But it's well, Brad, tough, it's difficult. We do it for you through the AI. Brad, and, and this is the part about the large numbers. Imagine every single one of these filters. Our AI is going through them and, and saying, hey, where is the right, what would I do if I were Dan and Brad, and if I was doing this slowly and maybe with a glass of wine, what would I put in there? It's, that's how you teach it. That's what it's learning. It's going through intense amount of new numbers. And again, these numbers that you see, the 1,960, whatever, that's in the, uh, uh, the staging element, these are kind of small. This, the reason we're growing so fast and the reason that how we ended up winning today is because we have the statistical advantage through the law of large numbers. Right now, there are a million trades that are being processed. She's looking at the penny stocks, looking at the large cap stocks, looking at everything you can imagine and still hunting for, you know, an edge. And by the way, that edge is not obvious. It's not like you can print money because ultimately the future is unknown. The fact is, you, just like in Las Vegas, even the best card counters, and I would love for you guys to read a little bit about what card counting is because it's the best metaphor. Even the best card counters can go into a window where they just don't catch the cards. 
So even when it's set up, it's not perfect. I have to give you an example today. Brad, pull up CGIX real quick. All right, before, real quick, um, Sam really wanted to know where the price was, but you know, when you look at the alert window right here, these are the signals it generated today. It's the price that it generated. That's the, the, the idea that it's providing you in the suggested entry price. All right, Dan, what was that now? Um, the symbol? Go to CGIX. CIX? CGIX, Cancer Genetics Symbol. CGIX. So companies that are out there that we are hunting, okay, have immense stored potential energy. And this is part of the other thing that nobody will teach you in the financial markets why things move and how things move. This is again, Brad, you know I start to get mad, but my, but, but my, but my, uh, it's passion because it's so critical and so important. So people ask, Brad, can you tell me why does the stock go up and why does the stock go down? And the answer is some people buy, some people sell. Okay. Well, that to some extent is true. But what's kind of more important is think about it like a boat. <laughs> okay. Hey, Brad, if I'm in a canoe and I've got uh, two people in it rowing, I can go a certain speed. If I've got four people rowing, I could maybe go faster. If I've got six people rowing, I could maybe go even faster. If I've got eight people rowing, I'm going to need a bigger boat. These are the little details that people don't kind of put into the physics of momentum when it comes to investing in the stock market. The float, CGIX, Brad, has a 13 million share float. Could you pull up SNAP, please, for me? What's the symbol one more time? SNAP. S, not F. Snap. You know, the thing your daughter and son used to talk to you. <laughs> okay. So notice the float. Huge. Well, 10 times, right? 10, 10x. 277 million. Now, it traded 47 million shares today, okay, which is, you know, that's decent. But go back to CGIX. With a 13 million float, to get it to really go and move large percentages, it just doesn't take as much. Now, look at how this plays out. Look at the volatility and the possibilities that investors are able to see and participate in when they have access to technology that shows them some of these moves. I'm using CGIX as one example, Brad. You can pull up PULM or AUPH or VNCE. I mean, pull that one up. That was another good one. VNCE. Okay, PULM. Um, yeah. You just got to zoom in on the <laughs> on the daily. Well, you can see it. I mean, you can see it starting to turn right here. Some big volume coming into it. Right. People Last ask. How do you find the news? Where are the news? What's going on? Well, the news happens this way. This is what actual news looks like versus a story that you're going to read about on Twitter because the people that know something ahead of time are taking action. This is what it looks like. It does not guarantee anything, just like the card counting example. But you have to understand the mechanics and the physics of it. And again, on a float, that has only 20 million shares versus the 10x of a snap. Think that it takes much less. You, it's like you need less fuel to go. It's the efficiency. This is what we talk about. It's how far your dollar is worth on a stock like this versus on a stock like Snapple. Um, and there's tons of these. Look at NSPR that's in Brad's window there uh, right up ahead. And by the way, anytime you set our software, you can double click and uh, it automatically links. So, will Brad, will you click on NSPR? That's what you call like the beginning, the percolation with the volume. 
So there's certain behavior patterns that RAI looks for where, where it's the volume, the void fills, and all of that stuff. And as a result, you get, Brad, let's, you know, I like it when it all comes together, don't you? Will you please click on XENE, which is a Holly 1043. Notice the move, like you can kind of see that triangle wedge, Brad. Do you notice what I'm saying? Like right from the top on the on the daily, it's and, and draw it so that people can see. Yep. So this is called points of inflection, and RAI looks for these in what's called wake-up call <laughs> for a reason because it's like hello time to go we try to make it so that you don't have to like you know sit there and think that amazing technology is delivered to you by a PhD although we got one uh, by a PhD who you know has to give you a report and you sit there through it and it has something about a 10k and an SEC form and something like that that's just not how it works there's also, Dan, a good example of, you know, one of the proprietary data points that we have that we look at that you don't need to worry about. I mean, you look at this chart right here and you see this big volume bar, right? And that was indicative of something that was really special happening to that stock. But we're following that through a numerical reference, a data point. The AI is looking at that kind of information all the time. But, you know, this relative volume of 12, that's significant. That's letting you know that the stock is trading 12 times its normal volume at that point in time and it's that's the critical part at that point in time so because we know what's normal when that event is happening it's perfectly suited to deliver you that information so Sam's asking a question uh, the alert you buy at 1043 for X E N E is it something you get a, you get by a strategy you ask Holly to work on so we were uh, talking great right? question. Great, yeah, great question. Guys, well, Brad, you I mean, I, you can more than... Yeah, I was going to kind of address it in, in the, the example that, that you gave earlier with the Holly Hedge Fund entry signal staging, right? That was a, a strategy that had 2,000 signals. You couldn't really trade it. It, it wasn't, wasn't great. It looked good. It was the start of a good strategy, but it, there were just too many signals. You couldn't traded and and what you did was or had Holly go in and look and optimize that well that's what we do every day with a bank of just about 40 different strategies well we don't do it but the AI does it and it looks at these strategies and it massages the, the um, filters that it's using the data it looks at the most current data along with the historical data and really finds a way to make that strategy better in a way that we were showing you here with the Holly hedge fund um, so no we don't we don't you don't create that strategy. We've created these 40 different concepts. Some are long, some are short, some are breakout, some are pullback, all these different types of concepts. Some looking at cheap stocks, some expensive stocks, uh, and, and we're doing that optimization for you, and every, you know, we're always adding new ideas and concepts to the AI for analysis as well. Do you remember when we, we had a video on our website. It was the one before the recent Holly the Mermaid came out. It was the video that basically talked about, we are making you the CEO. What does a CEO do? Okay, now the CEO hires people to do stuff like number crunch, for example. So you don't have to create a strategy. That's what Trade Ideas does. We have AI and machine learning that's creating the strategies robotically. And then the results, Brad, appear as they do in time, just like a clock, and they're at the bottom. And there's two modes, risk on and risk off. And of course, by the way, listen, there's another question. They say, well, how could you possibly catch that nine cents in uh, CNCE? Okay. And I get that. You, It's not always possible to do that unless you really were just there and were kind of on autopilot. But, Brad, will you pull up CNCE? If you look at it, okay, 
if you look at where uh, it told you to exit and if you look at the events that happened sub subsequently, you kind of had a fairly good amount of time to be able to exit without catching that nine cents. So it ended up being actually 15 cents higher. So the idea is this, I mean, and this is again part, part of this stuff, Brad, that we must convey either better or so that everyone understands. You guys do understand that these are suggestions. It's just like your machine in Vegas saying, hey, Brad, the count's good, bet. You then have to bet. You have to do something. If there was a machine that could print money, I am certain that Steve Cohen would pay me for it. And by the way, this is about as close as it gets. But here's the deal, dude. It, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the magic is going to happen right now either, right? If you look at this this chart, it found some type of footprint, some type of identifying factor that says, look at me, look at this stock, something interesting is happening. Well, maybe it didn't pan out today. The market maybe didn't do what it could have done and just it was a little lackluster and just didn't happen. But look at the idea that it's presented us here. Well, that's using the, price alerts. Brad, great. Thank you so much for being on this topic because here's the thing, guys. This is what Brad's saying here is probably the most important freaking thing you're going to hear today. Okay? Day trading is idiotic if that's all that you're doing. Day trading should be a function of risk. Like, for example, let's say you got into some trades, just hypothetically speaking, and you're up $3,000. And that's a lot of money to you. Well, now that you're up $3,000, you could easily take that off the table as a function of risk management. Makes perfect sense. Let's say you're down $500. You also get out of all of your positions because you're like, you know, they're not moving in my direction. Why do I need to tie up capital? These are all examples of why, in a lot of cases, in some cases, day trading makes sense. But meaning like holding it for a short amount of time. But let's look at, Brad, uh, pull up uh, AUPH real quick. Just as an example here. Okay. Let's say you had the gap and held it, what happened the next day? Just kind of sat there in a tight range, and then the next day it went up. Okay, If you did not hold it between those two days, most likely you would have not been able to catch the rest of it because it was moving too quickly. It was very tough. But it wasn't like all in one day either, which is people get this face in front of the tree syndrome where either it's, I got to get out right away, or no, this is just for one day. Step back. Trading is an art. It can last days, it can last weeks, it can last years. Be open to it all. It's a function of risk management. That's the pure way to approach it. But AUPH kind of shows you that you don't have to necessarily get out. And sometimes when you don't get out is when you actually make the real money. From four to eight is 100%. And then there's like uh, another two points for tip. But I'm not even going there. Okay? So we look for this kind of behavior. This is a behavior. We don't need to focus on any particular stock because whichever stocks they are, today was XCNE. ARRY tried. So, Brad, let's pull that up real quick. And we're going to kind of finish off explaining how you tie it all in. So, ARRY. First, Brad had mentioned, by the way, that every single stock that you see on Trade Ideas, on the daily, regardless of what uh, you think, it, it's not set up for a day trade. It's set up to win today, which is to get you through the hardest part. But everything has way bigger long-term potential. Look at what you're seeing here, right? In ARRY, for example, the software is saying, hmm, this looks like kind of a mean reversion type of situation where it's at a support and the rubber band got stretched a little too far to the downside. Again, it doesn't know, but that's what it senses. And boom, let's go. Meaning that if you were able to, and again, you only would have been down 15 cents today, but if you were able to catch something like that on a statistical basis, it then tends to potentially go in your direction. So Brad, why don't we set an alert, just like Brad's doing. So Brad has just set an alert above, right about above today's high. That lets you know that there's legitimate demand because they're willing to pay more than the high of yesterday considering that it had come down. 
And you can see again a situation where something like this goes back and tries to test the near term highs. You don't need to worry about the news because if it doesn't work for you, you're just out. You know, that's the part where again the beauty of the combination of using day trading for what it is, which is a risk management tool, not the name of your fraternity. Brad, did you get that? That was good. Uh, Scott, uh, uh, copyright that. Yeah, okay, I'm trying to read. Go ahead, Brad. I said maybe we should take a few questions. Looks like they're piling. Yeah, let's, let's rock. You go ahead. <laughs> Okay, Sam, so this goes back to the, it's not a, an exact science. Now, our software is giving you the exact. In other words, it's telling you this is what I would do if I could, but on some of them you're going to be worse, and then on some you will be better. But it, as an indicator of what is happening, this is the best that you can do. And then Joe is asking, how's Holly's uh, track record uh, pertaining to uh, entries and exits? And, you know, because uh, this is all done via the alert technology, when an alert signal is generated, you know, that it's is off. a print that's happened in the marketplace. So that's what it's going off of, is level one data. Yeah, it, it cannot not be taking place. Like, we don't get out because, you know, it just sees some a picture. I mean, there has to be a print that's being built. Everything is fully... Uh, synchronized. So David asked, at what point uh, do we see Holly saturating? And here's the thing: the head, the head. First of all, she has plenty of large cap strategies. Their statistics aren't setting up, but when they do, they will, and we'll be in them. There's been plenty. Of, she's been in AMD. She's been in tons of stuff. And what Brad is doing is he's showing you that, like, Brad, let's do another one for back to CNCE. Let's put a, an alert ourselves because we know that it's not simply just for day trading. It's for long-term stuff. In this case, if CNCE breaks above here, it's definitely what you would describe as a momentum-based news-generated something setup because someone's paying the highest price they've ever paid completely starting to wipe away that long-term negative uh, trend that started at its previous high several years ago at 24. That's the kind of stuff you want to see. That's what we're showcasing, the stuff that they're not talking about on CNBC because CNBC sucks. The stock market today is as good as, if not better, than those pictures that they took of me in Austin, Texas when it was incredible. The thing is that you just don't know about the things that you need to know about where the news happens. You know, Brad and I, we talk about how, what is the stock market, Brad? It's the currency of innovation. If you look at what these companies are doing, like PULM, by the way, uh, pull that up. They had some news about... What's the stock? What's the stock? P-U-L-M. Their drug got approved for COPD, which is like a multi-billion dollar disease. And again, while we don't know, P-U-L-M, not C-U-L-M. Yeah. So they got that drug approved. Um, and and you, there's no, 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 no knowing how much upside potential there is. There was an article saying it could even be a buyout candidate. Again, we don't know, but certainly it's behaving like somebody knows something. So the point being is that's the kind of things you need to be aware of. That's where the money is in the stock market. Okay? It's not just sitting there in Apple computer or Microsoft and hoping and saying, oh, ball come, it'll come back. You know, listen, everything that you've been told pretty much is a lie. Now, of course, there are companies that are great. They're in the stock market, and their stocks have done well. Amazon, and I own some of them, and I do also have my money in 401k. But if you want to take it to the next level, and if you want to experience, I mean, look at the potential here. Brad, and you know that everybody, if, if you are a customer, you already know this. I first put on my trade in PLM myself, because I also do this, at 62 cents. I don't need to be out of it if I had held it, which I didn't, but I'm just saying, and I have 500 of it now, by the way. So 
one of the ways that we stay relevant is because we are still the MIT card counting team, not just some managers and all that kind of stuff. We do it. We're in the game to be relevant because we know the game needs to be changed. So, so Dan, David's asking a question, but I'm not sure what he means by our position ring tool, visual indicator, position ring. Position ring. Uh, is this thing? Is it the, your today performance? Position and range, maybe? Uh, position and range. Dude, that's like the best thing ever. Did David not like it? Why don't you bring up Alpha Predator stream? And maybe throw in a, uh, a change of filter or something, and we'll show them a couple more. Oh, that's sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't realize that was a multi-strat. Well, it's okay. But I mean, a position and range. If that's what you're talking about, the position and range we have on all different time frames. It's a great indicator. It's a great filter. And Here, it basically. I, I guess Here, pop this in. Brad and I are quick. We're like uh, sharpshooters. <laughs> And by the way, this is a window that for today I will also hand out. It's one of our favorite windows called Alpha Predator Stocking. Okay, so Brad, you can sort this by position in 20-day range percentage. In other words, if you want to see everybody that's kind of approaching or at their 20-day high, here's what it looks like. And let's click on them so that people can see. Sorry, I was just posting the uh, the link there. All right. So what does that look like? Look like it looks beautiful like this. But again, stocks you won't see or hear anywhere else. It's beautiful stuff, but beauty alone to the eye doesn't do it. That's where Holly puts the extra nectar magic. You need oh, well, those are one of our favorites, the void fill. Mm -hmm. But again, bottom line is the position and range lets you see. So here's something interesting. Like, let me, Brad, don't, don't put it on NSPR. Let me just talk to it, okay? So NSPR is making a turnaround play. It's not a breakout play. It's a turnaround play because look at the, where it is in its 20-day range. It's up towards the lower end of it. So I can see that visually. I can click on it. And instantly, I know exactly what's going on. Already so, have the price alert set for that. It's not going to get past 138 with, yeah. or 137 without me knowing about it. Yeah. So, Brad, why don't we? Uh, uh, do you have the PowerPoint also, or do I need you to give me the? Okay. I don't have it. All right. Yeah. No, hold, hold on, Big Fella. You, you're about to have it. Are you going to give me a link? Okay. Brad and I, we can do anything if we put our minds to it. Pop that in. And go to the slide uh, after. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go to join the room because this is okay. Let's do the present, join the room. I'm answering the question how simple is trade ideas for beginners? Well, one of the things that you have to understand is that trade ideas has been around since 2003, and we've learned an incredible amount and talked to almost everybody that's involved in active investing. And so what we did was we realized to be the best uh, in fintech, we needed to make the education and the on-ramping seamless. Okay. How do we do that? Well, Barry Anderson, who's also assisting in the room, um, runs our Trade Ideas trading room, and it's free. It's free to everybody and you do not have to be a subscriber to Trade Ideas. You just need to create a username and password because we are trying to teach the best practices there. Barry leads it. He showcases his trades. I'm in the room quite a bit insulting everybody and often get kicked out. But you interact with us on a completely human basis, and it's free, and there's a meritocracy in there. People ask each other questions. They share strategies. They use the odds maker. So you are never, ever, ever left alone. I cannot uh, speak more about this. So this is step one. You don't even have to be a subscriber. You're going to get benefit 
right away. We also have a trade of the week um, where if you go to this room, it'll ask you, and the trade of the week is delivered to you every Monday. It's free. It's done by Steve Gomez, who basically calls uh, from the information. Like he is looking at that staging list uh, that we give Holly, the hedge fund staging list type of setup, and uses the uh, optimization to really nail down the one that he wants to give. So he's got the best of the best. And then he sprinkles it with his experience, and Steve's been doing this since 1998. And uh, that's how you get it. So we, we really try to provide a lot of free information in immense amounts of videos. Our YouTube channel is stacked and packed with literally anything and everything you could possibly ever, ever want to uh, have and need in, in terms of getting on rank. Brad, next slide, please, sir. Did you mention the uh, training? I may have tuned out to you. Oh, right? well, Dan, I forgot. Thank hmm. you. And, of course, when you subscribe, if you are an active subscriber, you get a one-on-one -on -one, uh, training session with our educational team that's made up of uh, a lot of very astute people who know trade ideas inside and out. They're better than me. They don't even let me play golf with them anymore. <laughs> they're, they're like a, they're like the, they're like the non-teenage mutant ninja traders. Okay. Next slide. Next slide. One of the ways that you know people ask, so how do we get that eight cents out of Holly? Well, this is the answer. Okay, we're getting closer and closer to letting you mimic Holly with automation. I'll be honest. And Brokerage Plus already works. I'm using it. Barry's using it. There's a lots of early adopters who are using this. It is a link that allows you to trade off of the Holly signals and put them right into your Brokerage Plus. So basically, it's a gateway. We use the Brokerage Plus API, but we do a lot of cool stuff with it. And again, it's something that we have webinars on, we have videos about, but it's the right click and send to so that you can do the best kind of thing that you can do with, what, with what's there today. It's like the closest you can get to full auto. And again, there's the link is trade well, ideas. And, no, I mean, really, though, there is full auto capabilities. Well, there, right. Like, for example, well, well, Brad, you're up. Sorry. You're, Brad's smarter than I am. I, I just speak better. Or maybe more words is more accurate. The people. Uh, <laughs> okay, you go ahead then. <laughs> All right, so I was just going to say that, you know, if you do have an alert window, like I, I gave a couple of alert windows earlier today, you can take that, and I'll just, I'm not even going to do it here, but I'll just show you. You can fully... Well, that one that we made for them. Brad, let's just do the one that we made for them and show them what it would be like. Let's do the, like, the full thing so they see how... All right, so let me find it. it. I don't think I... Did I save it to the cloud? Yeah. I have it. I have it. No, I have it right here. So I'm going to load it because I had two different windows here. So I'm just going to okay. grab the machine learned one. And I'm going to save that to my own cloud. And I'm going to come over to this window right here. I'm going to load that strategy right up into my strategies tab right here. Load from cloud. It should be the very first one on my list right here. I'm going to load it. I'm going to add it to the existing strategies that I have. And you're going to see that strategy has been added in right here. Now what I want to do is I want to tell it the, the set of instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the trading strategy. And it already has it predefined, right? If I already told it I wanted to skip the first five minutes and avoid the last two hours, it, that cloud link already has that information stored. But I do want to tell it, you know, God, how this much is so cool. What's that? This is so cool. <laughs> so there's five thousand dollars. I want to commit to every time there's a new signal in that strategy. I can tell it how I want it to go to the market, market order, a limit order, uh, a limit delta. Off and the this last is all valet too, guys, that you do not have to sit there, you know, chiseling away at these fields. This is what we show you how to do. But once but, you have it, right? Once you've got it set up, you just hit OK. With it. It's there, and all you need to do is either turn it on or turn it off, and and it's set up, linked up. If I was to load up my uh, Trader Workstation from IB and then connect it, I'd be able to do the orders. Now it's not working pre-market or post-market. Right now it's just during the regular market session, but we'll be adding in those different options for, for the different time and forces.
Okay, so that's all I really wanted to, to convey with the, the Brokerage Plus. So it's something that the Brokerage Plus does allow you to right click on any any window, whether it's a top list, alert, an AI, and it looks to your Brokerage Plus, the, the different order types that you've got set up, and you can send an order just like that, or like I was just showing you, automate the strategy. So it really does serve two different purposes. And kind of like the Tesla, as Brad was showing you, you can sort of go as advanced or as not advanced as you need to. There's so many things you can do. This is why our software really can't be replicated. Is because there's just so much power underneath there. But all that power is not necessary for you to do. One thing, though, I do want to point out is we did bring a little bit of the, uh, the AI thinking into Brokerage Plus. We have plans to do a lot more, but from an advanced exit perspective, um, just by right-clicking on here and, and turning it on, you can turn on that profit save feature where if something runs up a good amount and pulls back, you know, rather than taking a loss or flatting the trade, it'll get you out for a small profit. Uh, that or the reduced risk, uh, those are nice uh, pieces of functionality that you can build right into a strategy here for your advanced exits. Yeah, again, it's like the Tesla. It knows how not to crash into trucks for the most part, and you know it has a GPS in it. I mean, when you have it, and if anyone here, I, I bet you there's a couple of people in here who probably maybe drive one. I mean, how concerned are you with like the format of the signals they get from the satellite? Aren't you in it for the drive? That's what we're trying to do. At the end of the day, it still has to get to the market, and it's speculation. It's a blackjack bet. Don't get upset by that. That's the beauty of where we are. The costs are so low for the brokerage business that you've got nothing to worry about. So Sam is asking about linking to a Scott Trade account. Now we do symbol linking to the Scott Trade. We are embedded in Scott Trade, but this advanced functionality of sending orders off right now is only being directed through the interactive brokerage API. Um, at some point that may change. We may offer it to a much broader group, but while we're really refining the functionality, we want to make sure that we're targeting with a, a single broker. It's kind of like for the same reason you can't take your Camaro to a Tesla charging station. <laughs> yes. Okay, so back to Brokerage Plus a couple of questions. So remember, you would need a funded IB account. All the fees and everything else from IB's point of view, other than a little uh, API moniker, you might as well be trading on IB. All the trades are mirrored, so you can see them either on Brokerage Plus or IB. So all the yeah, and we're not taking a piece of any trade, so there's no fee yeah, associated we with you. Not take, we are just a SaaS. We don't have any brokerage relationships with you trading more or less. We just want you to trade better. So real quick question, Peter wants to know how to save that Brokerage Plus strategy. So I've added it in here, right? And next time I, I open this up, I want it to be there. There are a couple ways I can do it. I can come up to this window option here and I can save it to the cloud. So I can save this one Brokerage Plus window right to the cloud. That is so good. Here. I think Brad had to help me with this part seven times, but I, after the seventh, I swear I got it. <laughs> There's another way too, which is kind of cool that most people don't even realize is there, and that's save it as a default. And by saving it as a default, you then save everything the way that it is so that you don't need to go back to your cloud uh, to open it up. That's my cloud link that I can grab. Uh, but you can just open it right back up from new brokerage plus. And in the same way, you know, you can take like an alert window. Let's let me show you real quick. This this alert window by default happens to be this breaking out on volume window right here. But if I changed it, wanted to do anything I wanted to with columns, with the strategy, I can then right click and save as the default. So the next time I come up here, open my alert window, it's going to be set up the way that I want it. So that but works all the different ways. ways that you can customize it. I mean, literally umpteenth. It's so, so powerful. But with all that power, just like the Tesla, you do not need to worry about how the you know lithium ion is powering the drivetrain or motor. I don't think they don't have. Right, we've, we've run over a bit, Dan. Should we bring Scott in? Yeah. Well, well let's do this real quick. Pop in the um, the PowerPoint real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we said brokerage plus. Uh, next slide is we have a Friday podcast. We had Barry on our uh, podcast. I think it was very well received. It's kind of fun, a little bit like these webinars, less corporate-y. Um, we talk a little, you know, more about what 
uh, we do. Typically, it's myself and Jamie Hodge, who's a trading veteran over 20 years and uh, very successful, and he's our director of education. So a lot of you have uh, worked with him already, or he's the one that could be possibly training you. So we have this podcast. Uh, suggest to you register for that. Of course, the trade is I'm going to squeeze something in here. EC is asking about new users to use trade ideas in real time, right? So I think it just might be a, a good opportunity to say, generally speaking, we're going to be having, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's in April, late April, we're going to have an open house? Yeah, something like that. But everything is in real time. Um, trade ideas, all of our, your subscription, it includes the market data. We eat it, meaning we pay for it. We don't give it to you. There's part of the cost. Um, everything is real time. All our charts, all our converts, Everything is updated by us, and everything is really for that. If you're a non-professional trader, that's right. Um, okay, uh, Scott, we're ready to rock and roll, sir. Excellent presentation, thank you. Yeah, we do have a promotional code that is good this month. So if you want to go ahead and save 15% from your first month or year, go ahead and use Yes to Holly, all caps, just like you see it on your screen. We also put a handout in your handouts panel. If you click on the little expander, it's usually a little plus sign or a little arrow next to where it says handouts on your GoToWebinar thing. There's a PDF there for you to download that includes this as well as some other reminders and contact information. So when you become a subscriber, whether standard or premium, it also includes a full hour of one-on-one -on -one training, which makes the uh, 99 a month standard bless that uh, discount including the training, a really killer deal. And then go ahead and upgrade to premium, or if you're a standard subscriber, just upgrade to premium. If you need help, email us, uh, info at trade-ideas.com. So use the code uh, yes to holly 15% off your first installment. If you have any questions, shoot us an email or contact us directly. Uh, you can email info at trade-ideas.com. That's the best help desk email for you. Or you can reach out to Dan directly, dan at trade ideas, or Brad, brad at trade ideas. Follow us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash trade ideas pros, where to find us there. And then you can share the uh, interesting items that we post. Uh, Dan Merkins, Trade Ideas One on Twitter. You can also follow at Trade Ideas or uh, locate any of our other ones. Thank you for joining us. We'll have the recording up a little bit later and you get a reminder tomorrow about where to find it. Thanks, Dan and Brad. Good presentation. Uh, Oh, guys, tune in tomorrow for the uh, trading studio. You should be getting an invite a little while after this webinar ends. Go ahead and sign up for that, and then uh, join Andy Lindloff and Jamie and myself in the room tomorrow. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it.